In the first part of this video, we set up the tool and we set up the robot and also we import the simulation slider. Now we are going to create this uh, command here. So we are going to create this one as shown here. To do so, first thing you need to do is to import the geometry. So in my case, I've already created the surface that I want to melt. So I simply type in surface here, and I set one surface. Now it's imported into Grasshopper. Let me move this a little bit down. Now. Let me hide this one also we don't want to see right so what you want to do is we want to create the toolpath this box is the base i have for my uh for all of my milling um, pieces and let's say we have a uh, box here all right so that's the box that I want to melt, for example, and that's the surface of that box. So, first thing I need to do is to create the tool path. The tool, the the path is for the um, for the milling machine to cut. I need to create all of these paths so that the robot knows where to go. So to do so we have a lot of options one of them is to contour this uh, surface so contouring is in the uh, intersect and you can go to contour so the shape you want to uh, contour is the surface and then it asks you which direction you want to uh, cut it for in my case i just want to go into the x direction unit x Sorry, yeah. and then it gives you the distance. So this distance we can put an arbitrary distance for now, but later on we need to put the uh, correct half diameter of our bit that we are gonna use for cutting. So let me go a little bit faster. So after we um, slice the surface we have. Now what we want to do is, now we got these curves here, we got these curves, but what we want to do is, after we got these curves, now we want to connect, we want to divide these curves and get the endpoints of them, so what we want to do is to explode curve. Now we can get the first and the last point of these curves. Or we can also use the in points to get the first and the last points. But I would prefer to get just exploded to get all of these points. Now after we do that, we simply want to get the plane orient, plane normals here. Yeah. The origins are these vertices. So now we created this plane for the robot to guide it to approach these points. Afterward, we go to the Kuka menu here, and then we want to get a orient plane here. So we want to orient these points, these planes, into the Kuka robot uh, tool plane. So what you do is you simply connect these planes with these planes, and then we want an orient point. For us, we just create an arbitrary point here, and we select that point, and we, con and we connect it here, and. Try always to have the point above your robot arm 
So actually I did already create a point here, but anyway, that could be used as our orient point. And after that, we have to use, choose a movement from all of these movements here. We have a linear movement, we have circular movement, axis movement, point to point movement. For us, we are going to use the linear movement here. So that's the target as plane. Now we simply just want to connect this command with that command here. So let's connect and see what happens. Oh. So what happened here is, I guess all of it is grafted. All of these lines are grafted. So each each line has is inside its own dataset. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that we flatten these planes probably here. We can flatten them here. Now we can have them all inside one nest. You just simply right click and you flatten it. Now let's simulate and see how it looks like. Now as you can see, it's cutting and then going and then cutting the second one, third one, fourth, fifth. Let me reduce this number to like five and see what have what's happening. Oh, I should have increased the distance actually to like 50. Okay. So if you can, let me hide the unnecessary surfaces and also let me hide everything from here. Okay, probably we need... So what the robot arm is doing is... Let me show you what the robot arm is doing. The robot arm is starting from the first point. and then cutting it and then coming to the second point in a diagonal shape so we don't want the robot arm to jump it from one point and then starting again so this is if let me show you a point list here these are the vertices let's say four This is very small, let's put 100. Okay, so these lines, what we have is we have 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. As you have here, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. What we want to do is we want to flip the first line that remains as it is the second line, we flip it so that it starts from 0, 1, and then the robot arm should come to this point here and then go and then come to this point here and go so like we create a continuous movement for the robot arm to do that we need to flip half of these um, lines how do you flip them very simple we dispatch it you dispatch these control lines these curves we dispatch them you see here now we have two lists so if we go um, let me see the first group of the curves and the second group so what we want to do is we want to put a true false argument we already have it we simply need to flatten this flatten it and then let me disconnect this so now this one is flat and now we have group a and also we have group b which is these lines so that's what we want to do we want this and let me move a bit more here so the way to flip it is to use a flip curve here we want to flip one of these groups so let's flip the first group here so now these points this curve starts oh okay so fix upload now you can see this point starts from zero one and this group starts 
from the other side. So we flipped. We flipped these successfully. So after we flip them, now what we're going to do is to create a list from these curves and the flipped curves. The way to do so is to use weave. So that's the weave. What we want to do is this is streamline one and streamline two, and we want to connect it here. As you can see, it is now zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Now we have a continuous list. If you check the list here. Now we have a continuous list of these lines. After we created this list, we simply connect it back to the original. Now let's see the robot movement again. Now the robot is moving from first point, jumping, going to the second point and having a continuous movement. We just lift it up a little bit. Uh, 356 okay mm. it depends on your bit you need to increase it when you have a bit you need to calculate how much is the bit x axis how much are you adding to the x axis to the bit for you to simulate it correctly 